Bruchem Abayim, again, thank you for coming uh, to our home. Welcome. Um, this lecture tonight um, is a little bit different than most. What I usually call my lectures are uh, my thoughts. Just so happened this is a lecture that was given at my synagogue at the Beis Chabad uh, in uh, West Bloomfield um, when both rabbis were out of town. So um, the topic of this lecture is, is it appropriate for us to be happy in today's world. Again, a lecture that I gave at the synagogue last Shabbat. So again, good Shabbos, dear friends. Before I begin my Shabbos Russia today on the question that I think has crossed many of our minds, which is, is it appropriate for us to be happy in today's world? So let me first begin with an anecdote. You know, the Seder Tetzavah that we read today is unique. We observe an unusual phenomena about the Sedra. In this portion, Moshe's name is not mentioned even once. Now this fact is unusual seeing that that the beginning with chapter 2 in the book of Shemot, the second book of the Torah which introduced the birth of Moshe, and continuing all the way through the rest of the Torah to the end of the five books, Moshe's name is always mentioned. It is true that his name is not mentioned in five portions in the book of Devarim, but our sages tell us that the whole book of Devarim of Deuteronomy was spoken by Moshe himself and not dictated to him by God Almighty as were the previous four books. This fact is expressed by the words that open the first book, first verse in the book, Ela HaDevarim Asher Diber Moshe, which means these are the words that Moshe spoke. There are many reasons given for the omission of Moshe's name in this portion, but that is not really what I'd like to speak about today. I've met, as I've mentioned, this, I've, I just mentioned this fact because it kind of fits into my scenario today. Since both Rabbi Silverberg and Rabbi Schneer, the rabbis of our synagogue, are, are away for the Shabbat, and I was asked to fill in. Well, this reminded me of an anecdote that occurred to me a while back. You see, there was a person who had started coming to the morning minion to say Kaddish for their deceased parent. From time to time, we would talk and he would ask me questions. Well, I could see that he enjoyed our discussions. But well, one day, during one of our conversations, he looked at me with a quizzical look on his face and he said, tell me, what is your position in this shul? <laughs> I smiled and I just laughed. So since I believe that nothing's an accident, I think that it is not coincidental that I'm speaking on the one portion of the Torah where neither the speaker's name nor their title is mentioned since I too, so to speak, have no name or title, since I'm really like one of you. So let's begin with the topic of my drasha. Is it appropriate for us to be happy in today's world? You know, all of us are well aware of the difficulties that our brethren, those that are living in the land of Israel and in other parts of the world are facing today. It is a moment in time where it is, as the Yiddish saying goes, shver to zayn yid, difficult to be a Jew. None of us ever thought that it would be possible to not only read about the world that existed before the Holocaust, but that now we can actually experience firsthand the same anti-Semitism and concern that existed at that time. It is truly an eye-opener. Somehow people today think that they have permission to say things that they would have been embarrassed to even think before. Beliai and Hara we have, the, have for the most part been blessed in that we live in a wonderful and safe community. May God Almighty continue to bless and protect us all. However, that is not the case with many Jews who live in different communities all over the world, in addition to students who are attending secular colleges. So how are we to deal with all the pain and suffering that our brethren throughout the world, and especially in Israel, are experiencing? Those who still have family members who are hostages, those who are injured both physically and mentally, those families that are dealing with the loss of a loved one, and those who worry every moment of every day about the safety of their loved ones that are serving in the IDF. Do they still smile? Do they still laugh? You know, the Holy Baal Shem Tov tells us that more than the sight of evil wants you to sin, it wants you to be in a state of melancholy. If you are unhappy, well, then sinning is an inevitability. 
I believe that we have an obligation to live our lives with joy at all times, as it states in Psalm 100. Ivdu es Hashem besimcha, serve God with joy. This is exactly what all of our brethren that are experiencing difficulties are trying to do daily, to find joy in each and every day that the INDF is winning and that Hamas is losing. World opinion has always been against us, but we do not put our faith in people. As we recite in our morning prayers daily from Psalm 146, Al tiftuchu, do not put your trust, but then Adam, in people, she'en lo teshua, who do not have the ability to bring about a deliverance. As the Alter Rebbe told his grandson, the Semach Tzedek, on his deathbed, Trach gut, but sein gut. Think positive, and the results will be positive. The Alter Rebbe explained to his grandson that heaven returns to us what we send up to God. If we send up misery and depression, well, that is exactly what we will receive in return. However, if we send up prayers of hope filled with positive conclusions, then that is what we will receive. I think that most of us see ourselves as spectators to the events that are occurring daily to our brethren in the land of Israel and around the world. We need to remember that we are one nation, one people, one body. We must view ourselves as active duty soldiers with a designated mission in this war. We cannot sit on the sidelines and think that we're not personally involved. True, we may not be serving on the front lines in Gaza around the border with Lebanon, but we do have a specific mission, though ours may be of a more spiritual nature. We all need to storm the gates of heaven with our prayers. We need to pray for the safe return of all the hostages and the speedy recovery of all those that have been injured. We need to beseech God Almighty to console all those who have lost their loved ones. We need to demand that God Almighty, that he brings an end to this war and that he returns all of our brave IDF soldiers home safely, being led by Mashiach Zekeno now. Many of us feel, what difference does it make if I say one more prayer? recite one more psalm, or even make one more donation, all in the merit of those that need salvation in this dire moment of darkness. We should realize that when we are in a synagogue and the congregation is reciting psalms for the salvation and protection of our troops and civilians, that we are on active duty serving in the Jewish army, we have a mission to perform. If we fail to join the congregation, in prayer, we have disobeyed our orders. We leave ourselves open to be brought up on charges for a dereliction of duty. The Rambam makes a, a strong point that on the high holidays, a person should see themselves balanced equally between merit and deficit. At the same time, they should also view their actions as connected to the whole world. Imagine that the one mitzvah or one sin that they perform will tip the scales of judgment, not only for themselves, but also for the whole world. That is the way we should view even one mitzvah that we perform in the merit of all of our brethren that are in harm's way. You know, they tell a story about a king who sent his top general to conquer a city. The general sent his commandos against the city gates, but they were wiped out to the man. He then sent his cavalry against the city gates, and they too were wiped out to the man. Next, he sent his infantry against the gates of the city, and they too met the same fate as did the others, having no other choice. The general mustered up his cooks and supply troops, and he sent them against the gates of the city. They broke through the gates, and they conquered the city. After the battle, the general went to see the king. He expected to see the king in high spirits. Instead, the king looked confused. The general said to the king, I thought that your highness would be celebrating your victory. The king said to the general, of course I am happy, but at the same time, I am a bit confused. Now, are you going to tell me that my cooks and supply troops are my best soldiers? The general looked at the king with a big smile. He said, no, your highness, of course not. The commandos did what they were supposed to do. The cavalry did what they were supposed to do. And the infantry did what they were supposed to do. After they all finished, you could have sent the Girl Scouts against the city gates, and the gates would have fallen. It's just needed 
one more push. You know, the word push stands for pray until something happens. The power of one. Let us all attempt to fulfill our mission in earnest as one nation, one people, serving the one and only God. Let us never lose sight in the belief of the power of one. One more prayer, one more psalm, one more dollar given to charity. Let us pray that we will be successful in opening up the gates of salvation for our brethren in Israel and for all over the world. Surely then, the one and only God, our benevolent Father in heaven, will open up the gates of forgiveness and salvation and help us in our hour of need. I would like to conclude my words with a suggestion that we should all place a special emphasis on the ending words of the prayer that we recite three times daily, 365 days of the year, the last prayer of the Amida, called Sim Shalom, Bestow Peace. The last phrase of this prayer ends with the words, And may it be favorable in your eyes to bless your people Israel at all times and in every moment with your peace. The prayer ends with the repetition of that request. Blessed are you, God, who blesses his people, Yisrael, with peace. So in answer to my opening question, is it appropriate for us to be happy in today's world? Well, the answer is yes. There is a fundamental Hasidic teaching that Simcha parts back getter, that joy has the power to overcome all obstacles. So let us all join together in joy and together with the power of our prayers. Let us help to usher in the coming of Shia Now, again, thank you for listening and a good Shabbos to all. May God bless you and yours with all that is good. And again, let us all say to Hillam together for the state of Israel. Again, thank you for listening. And again, remember, we are all soldiers together, wherever we are. We need to fulfill our duty. Thank you. God bless. Be well. Shabbat Shalom.